if you can really operate on 85 degrees Celsius, this could be a great filament drive for the nylon. Welcome to my Techfant, another filament dryer testing video. This is Print Dry Pro 3. And this box is sent to me by the company in exchange for the review. And I didn't even know about this unit until I didn't create that uh, video about drying the nylon. It was a scientific research on our department, and the conclusion there was that on 70 degrees Celsius, if the nylon is full of moisture, then we need at least 7 days, uh, 10 days to dry it completely. So that's why it is important to keep it dry as much as possible. And in that case, maybe in 24 hours, it can be closer to the dry state, so it, it will be usable. And there I mentioned that it would be so good to have the filament dryers, which can heat up the air up to 90 degrees Celsius. And there I got these comments that I should test this one too, because uh, according to specifications, it can heat up the air up to 85 degrees Celsius. And this will significantly reduce the drying time. You can watch that video, we have very interesting results there. Some specifications from the website, it has built-in timer, it can accept two regular size spools up to 200 mm diameters, but I'm not sure how wide are those filaments, I will check it later here because that information I couldn't find on the website. It has closed loop design, this means that it can adjust the heating according to the temperature, and it measures the temperature on four locations, so very interesting unit and it looks like a good quality, but we will see soon. In this year I already tested at least four filament dryers and I already mentioned there that I'm preparing another six filament dryer comparison video, similar to one I did two years ago. And the reason I delayed that video is exactly this unit because I want to include it in that comparison. In this video I will use that regular sponge drying testing method. In this case the results are comparable with the other earlier videos, but in that six filament dryer comparison video I will dry exactly the nylon which is hardest for the drying and more sensitive to moisture. It's time to unbox the unit. Hmm, I thought it would be empty. What is this? This was content of the package. This is the main unit and I can see that it works similar to the full dehydratators. So it sucks the air here from the bottom and probably here it blows the hot air. And there is the temperature sensor. We have this tray top cover. Additionally, we have this uh, storage for one filament and uh, we have this vacuum pump. This is USB type C, but this is only for the charging because it has its own battery. And this is the spool holder and we have these adapters for different size of the spool. The smaller is for the 48 to 54 millimeters and the bigger one is from 54 to 58 millimeters. On this tray we have the recommended drying temperatures and the times and for the nylon 85 degrees Celsius 12 hours. This spool holder is quite unique but not universal. With this system, when uh, the hot air comes in in the center, this pool will not get equal drying or heating. This side will be hotter compared to this side. Maybe a solution will be some kind of CD printed shroud, which we can place it here, and it will split the air and it will go exactly below this pool. But if you do that, don't forget to use nylon or something what is thermal resistant. Even after a short drying, it is quite obvious that the heat is not spread equally. Currently I'm not sure where to place the sponge of my testing. Usually I place it in the center of the spool holder, so I have to find some kind of solution to place it exactly here. I'm not sure where with the hot air or the moisture go out, because here we don't have holes on the top, and maybe through these holes uh, if we don't place this locking mechanism. Also one of these holes can be used for the exit of the filament, and for this we have this plug. And I don't really like this material, this feels like some kind of rubber and some carbon fiber nylon make case a lot of friction with it. Some kind of Teflon I think it's, it's better. Well actually probably the correct method would be using it together with this Teflon tube which is provided in the package. Like this. The operation should be very simple because we have the power button and plus minus properly setting the temperature and the time. Let's give it the power. I just couldn't turn it on. I tried short press, long press, double press. Uh, now I unplug the AC power and uh, I removed these four screws and also I had to remove these two to remove this shroud. And now I can open it. 
at least I can show you how it looks like inside. So here we have these two boards. Uh, the power goes in the AC power. This is the heater, some axial fan. These are the wires to the thermistor. And there are those buttons. And I think I can see the problem. Well, I'm not sure how much you can see on the screen. I found this spring, which is in wrong position. This, this should press this power button from the other side. Let's try to fix this, but properly off camera, it's not so comfortable to record. Oh, this will not stay easily in this position. I have to be very careful because it is open. I will just give it the power to test it. Uh-huh, and it works now, okay. These are self-cutting screws and I hope I don't have to take them out too often. Okay, it's completely assembled now. One more time. Okay. These are touch buttons. Mm, the fan is not too quiet. This is not something where you would like to listen in the same office, I don't know, 10 hours or something like that. Now let's see, these buttons I can use to set the temperatures and it steps by 10 degrees Celsius. The maximum is 85. And if I want to change the time, I have to press them at once. And now it blinks, these are properly hours. Five, six, so after this it will turn off when this time expires. And I have to wait a few seconds and it will switch to the temperature again. And when I turn it off, it requires some time because it wants to cool down inside before it completely turns off the fan. But using this display is very simple, but it will be good to have at least two screens to see at the same time the temperature and the remaining time. And maybe it will be good to have some information about the humidity too. And it is time for my regular sponge test. This will be its position. I always try to place it somewhere in the center of the spool. Of course, I will add two milliliters of water and then I will uh, heat it and follow its mass after half hours and after one hour. And of course, I will follow the temperature and the humidity during this. This will be the position of DHT22 humidity and temperature sensor. And it is very close to that hot air which comes from the bottom. But I also decided to add another sensor which will be next to the wall. The information from the sensors I can see on this screen, but with this Arduino Uno I'm collecting the data every 10 seconds and I can see it on this screen, but later I will analyze them in the Excel table. Current temperature in this room is approximately 24 degrees Celsius and 50% is the relative humidity. Weight of the dry sponge. Approximately 2 ml water added, 2.702. And now I can start the drying on maximum temperature. I can start collecting the data. And I will measure it after half hours and after one hour. After approximately five minutes, I can see the temperature on the main sensor is 63 degrees Celsius. Next to the wall is 51 approximately, but we will analyze the temperatures later when it is finished. The noise from half meter distance is approximately 46 decibels, which is not too quiet for the filament dryer. It's time for half hour measuring. 0 0.925. And it looks like the temperature will be stabilized around 70 degrees Celsius, at least on this position. Later I will try to measure directly the hot air. It's time for the one hour measuring. Looks completely dry. 0.637, exactly. This means it's even drier than the beginning because it has some moisture inside. I will collect some cooling data, maybe five more minutes. Now I stop collecting the data, but I also want to measure the temperature of the hot air. And now I move the sensor, it will be exactly above this hot air, so it should measure even higher temperatures compared to their sensor. Of course, I don't know what does it measuring, but properly if it is set to 85 degrees Celsius, I should see here higher temperatures. I can see only after a few minutes the temperature of the hot air stabilizes around 100 degrees Celsius, which may be too much, not for the nylon, but for some spools, yes. And I will check later if I set lower temperature, then what will be the temperature of the hot air. Let's say we want to dry PETG. I will set the temperature now to 65 degrees Celsius, and then I will see what will be the stabilized temperature of the hot air. I can see the temperature stabilizes around 70, 72 degrees Celsius, and this may be even too much for the PETG if it gets this hot air. 
to the print dry, I would suggest to provide at least some kind of STL for different fan shroud, which will protect better the spool from the direct hot air. This problem is not new, I already saw it several times. For example, with this filament dryer, I also printed this part from the nail on because this air was too hot. I can see that new units now arrive with this shield, but my unit arrived without it, so I have to print it myself. I also tested this vacuum container. The pump and the vacuum works great. The only problem was that I didn't know how to open it without damaging the valve. This really works great and in the meantime I got the help from my friend Everson from Geek Detour, so this is how can I release the vacuum. Perfect. Let's analyze the measured data. This is the temperature and relative humidity from the main sensor and this is the temperature and the humidity from the sensor which was next to the wall. The max temperature was approximately 68.5 degrees Celsius in the location where the center of the spool would be. And here it was open for 30 minute measuring and here for one hour measuring. We can see that uh, there is no big change in the relative humidity after 30 minute opening because sometimes I can see when the moisture stuck inside, when I open it for the measuring, I can see big change in the relative humidity. Here this means that it works great and relative humidity goes out. Also we can see that the wall relative humidity was lower compared to the main relative humidity. This means that the hot air goes out there next to the wall and with this uh, the moisture goes out too. Approximately here it reached the set temperature according to its own sensor and then we can see that it turns on and off the heater that's why we can see these small waves which is fine because sometimes I saw these waves much bigger three or four minutes and in that case we have big peaks which is not good. This is the temperature of the direct hot air when I set the temperature to 85 degrees Celsius according to their sensor and the temperature stabilizes around 100 degrees Celsius. When I set the temperature to 65, in that case the temperature of the hot air stabilized around 72 degrees Celsius. And this is the result of the sponge drying test. After half hours it removed 88% of the water and after one hour it was drier than before this testing, probably it had some start moisture from the environment. And you can compare this data to the other dryers visiting this link. Well, the drying capabilities of this filament dryer is very similar to those which I tested in this year, reaching approximately 70 degrees Celsius in the center of the spool. It has space for the improvement, for example on the screen. It would be good to see not only the set temperature, but also the measured temperature, the measured relative humidity, the remaining time and similar. I also don't like that this hot air hits the half of the spool directly. It would be good to have some kind of fan shroud which would split this air and it can go directly below the spool and then around the spool resulting more equal drying. So now we have again that six filament dry comparison we do, and this time I will dry the nylon and we will see which one dries the best. And just a small reminder, if you would like to see that video too, you should not only to subscribe but also you should click that notification bell button too because very easily you can skip that video. I'm not sure why but in most cases the notification is not sent to my regular subscribers, only to those who click that notification bell button too. Anyway, thank you for watching and happy drying!